Ulcericia, just Thank you so much, friends. Sean, can we start? I mean, it's four o'clock now. Or should we wait for a couple of minutes more? I will wait two minutes. Wait two minutes. Okay. All right. I request each and everyone once again, please rename yourself, all the participants. Please rename with the name. Name your IBB membership number. Yeah. It will be nice if we can so that uh, and it will be recorded and. Uh... Good afternoon. Will you, will, will you help us in getting CPRs also? We are asking for our IBJ number. Uh, Manoj okay. sir, we are actually uh, developed. We have actually developed a form for attendant purpose, which we'll be using for uh, crediting the CPR for all the participants. Manoj sir, it's already there. It they have been waiting enough to give us the CPRs, so that is done. Uh, you can see, uh, Sean, can you please uh, that sh uh, share the Google form once again? Sir, Shankar, I'm doing it. I'm doing Shankar, it. Do. Shankar, oh. yes. Shankar can, are you hearing me? I'm still here. Yes, sir, I can. Yeah. yeah. Shankar, is, is, do, don't we have to file separately for CP hours with the sites or? No, no, Sorry. you have a Google sheet in the chat box. Please fill in that. And it will reach IPA of ICMA. You don't have to apply separately on this. No, sir. For claiming no, CPER, no. you, you have to apply. This is just for marking your attendance. It's Google form is for marking your attendance. This attendance sheet will be going to all the three IPAs for approving the CP hours. We've developed a form okay, so for mark your, marking your attendance, which will basically. be shared during the course of the uh, this webinar in the chat box. You'll find it in the chat box. Already shared once. We'll try. Uh, Sean, you may kindly share once again. Maybe we'll share in the due course also. When we when we when we log in, if we give our name, it automatically will get into the Google form. No, no, it is there. It is there in the chat box. There is a special Google form given. Please try it uh, separately. It will take you to the Google sheet. You may just go through the uh, Google I mean chat box, sir. So glad to see uh, Narasimha sir because I've seen his uh, you know, a number of times in, you've heard and uh, you know you know visit the website of IPA. And, oh yeah, nice, nice, nice to meet you. See you in person. Yeah, I okay. <laughs> and, and, and I think that's I think a good number. I mean the the presence here of so many IPs is very encouraging. I mean, uh, in fact, happy with the idea. Yeah, we have been so, you know, thankfully, a uh, good set of people. Right. Yeah. You know, our, 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 if you look at, uh, you know, I'm not big. I'm, I'm not saying this because I'm a Malayali or from Kerala. You get good judgment, judgments from Kerala High Court, starting from, <laughs> you know, our uh, yeah, constitutional thing. You know, a lot of judgments from mm. Kerala High Court. So. I hope a couple of for good reasons our uh, you know uh, I please also get to do that. And I think uh, I can see it's not only Malayalis. Not only maybe I'm the seeing. largest chunk here, but it's it's across the board across the country. You know there are a lot of <laughs> people I know who are here. Yes, across, yes. across the country. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have been so a long stand relationship with the AIPA. Now that we have, uh, you know, joined hands with IBC and uh, is a recognition of us and IPA is also joining with us. Nice. Because of that, our speaker is from Delhi, from Northern India. Exactly. I mean, uh, Puja Ji, welcome to our, you know, this Thank series of Thank you webinar. so much. Uh, you know, we, we, we Good have... evening to everyone. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to this. Yes. Mm -hmm. so have been, uh, taking her services a lot, even earlier also in our IPA platform. And I, I must confess you and tell you that she she reached up to Supreme Court level for, uh, you know, avoidance transaction. She was the only lady and the, I think the first uh, IP who reached to that level and she got very success in that also. And uh, that case has been quoted by me and many of the platforms uh, earlier also. And uh, what happened is that she was telling me, the, 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 you know, the last week only 
that uh, the, you know, that particular doctor now has gone for insolvency and uh, what whatever he was recovering uh, for proposed supposed to recover from him under that perfect transaction he is going for a repayment plan for that particular payment now <laughs> so something Let's see how it goes no sir we were able to get more than 50% of the amount from the other uh, okay, okay, okay 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 yes only the directors went in for the pg so let us see how that will um, i'm trying to lay the law uh, helping in that also that, yes uh, there should not be any misuse of the provisions of ibc that is that is of utmost importance for every insolvency professional that is what we need to do sir but the best part is that you are doing something path breaking you reach you. able to recover you, against sir. that particular transaction uh, uh, knock into the Supreme Court door. Otherwise, you know, generally we people feel that recovery against avoidance is very, very less. I think if you make an effort in anything in life, we do manage to succeed. So looking forward to this also, this is also a very path-breaking development, which is now which we are going to be discussing in the next two hours. Yes. I totally agree with you. I am a person, let me confess, had, had the CRP forms would have been simpler, I would not have you know, seriously, because I thought of not, uh, you know, focus too much on taking up IP assignment just because of the reasons of this compliance. You know, on set, you have got an umpteen number of headaches when you handle an, uh, a CRP assignment. On top of it, IBB will also dance on our head based on this. So that is one of the reasons. But that's uh, part of it. It's, it's, it's evolving. I have to really appreciate the efforts done by IBB and the government of India. No doubt on it. I may know that uh, Puja ji was one of the IPs who was consulted by IBBI. Yes, I was a part of the study yes, group. Uh, she was so I'm very happy that it has shaped very well that all our recommendations yes. have actually been taken into account. Mostly, mostly, most of them have been taken into account. So it is it is very endearing to actually see uh, this discussion paper. I understand. So shall we start and how long? Yeah, yeah. Now you go for formal starting. Please. Sean, can you? Yeah. Uh, I request each and everyone to mute because this is the normal protocol we follow when you conduct an so online meeting. So all to remain muted unless we called upon the speakers legally. Please don't interrupt the speakers and we plan in such a fashion that the speaker towards the only towards the end of the session we will en entertain question and answer session. So till that time, uh, please allow the speaker to speak. I will start with a silent prayer. We're not uh, reciting the prayer for 30 seconds. Let's start the session. Let me welcome all the esteemed guests. We have with us Sri G.S. Tarasimha Prasad, sir, Managing Director, IPA, ICMAI. We have with us Sri Gyan Chandra Mishra, sir, Chairman, IBC Committee, ICAI. We have with us our speaker, Madam Pooja Bahri. We have with us President, AIIPA. Sri Manoj Kumar Anand, our own chairman, uh, CMA IP Shankar Panika, sir. I welcome each and everyone present here on behalf of the managing committee of Kerala Insolvency Proshal Forum. I would like to brief about the Kerala Insolvency Proshal Forum. We are an association which has started in the year 2018, comprising all professionals to provide a learning platform to all. And our purpose is knowledge dissemination. Our mission statement, let me read the mission statement of our KAPF. To promote and support the professional activities of insolvency professionals who are members of KIPF by exploring professional opportunities, knowledge, updating, academic activities, and matters of mutual help and benefit of members. To do handholding with regulatory authorities, governmental organizations, professional bodies, industry associations, and others for knowledge sharing and helping in creating a compliance ecosystem for the stakeholders of Insolvency and Bankruptcy Court 2016. With this, I would like to call our chairman, 
Mr. Advocate uh, CMA IP Shankar Panika for his address. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Sean. Uh, good evening to all of you, all, uh, Mr. Prasad, Pooja, ma'am, Mr. Gyan Sharma, and uh, Manoj, sir. Uh, indeed, I'm extremely happy uh, uh, for uh, being part of this initiative. Uh, when we thought about this, we normally uh, pick up subjects based on the feedback from our group. Our group is a very, you know, whenever new, uh, as, as any other IP WhatsApp group, we used to deliberate on certain judgments. And to tell you about the background of this particular uh, KIPF, we actually, in the past four or five years, we have been very regular in conducting meetings. And the last year also, we have partnered with certain banks so that we picked the best of the best speakers and de deliberated a lot of issues. And we have got, in fact, uh, uh, positive, very, very positive response. So based on uh, the feedback, we thought of taking up the subject and uh, my only one and only choice was Madam, because she used to give me tremors during COVID days, talking about all these modifications. Every time I get to hear, I mean, attend her session, I'll end up losing two kilos of weight, you know, tension as to when will my this thing get over. So Madam was so gracious uh, to uh, accept. And then came our uh, Manoj sir. So, there are certain people who, without any reservation, we can just it's a deal of this uh, topic and uh, the way they have been uh, researching. Um, IBC was very, very, IBC was very, uh, uh, you know, gracious enough to co-partner with us. Then suddenly, my good friend, younger brother, Pranab, uh, bounced at us and then, why don't you, why are you, sir? Why can't, why can't we do it together? I said, I am, and without wasting a second, I said, absolutely fine. Because end of the day, um, for me, CMA Institute, being the past chairman of SIRC, it is very, very close to me. Whatever little I am is because of my institute. So uh, I just could not, uh, I didn't ask anyone, just said, I'm okay with that. So thank you so much, friends. Uh, we, 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 are, we are going to create value. Uh, when it comes to IBC, I, just, I mean, CIRP forms, <clears throat> I always thought why um, all these things are being repeated, you know. Uh, maybe then I thought, okay, typically you want certain information and whenever you need uh, information, uh, you prepare a format and get it downloaded. I mean, uploaded from IP side and get downloaded from your side and come out with a, uh, you know, statistics. And IBBA website comes up with very elaborative statistics. So that could be the reason for the CIRP forms. So that could be the background for the CIRP forms. But then if you look at the existing system that is existing CIRP 1 to 8, the entire CIRP forms, entire CIRP activities have been, you know, cut into small, small pieces. You know, starting from public announcement, then public announcement to appointment of RP, then again to RFRP, then the IM, all those things. So that means so detailed they've been, you know, they've they've been going. So probably the learnings would have, uh, uh, they would have got the learnings that are uh, now that IPs are, uh, uh, you know, with a lot of other trainings and other things could be uh, they are more equipped to take it, uh, take a uh, you know assignment more confidently. So that could be the reason, I don't know. And of course, the reduction of, uh, you know, duplication. I always feel uh, duplication is an essence. And one thing being a lawyer, I have always felt that something we should give feedback to IBBI. That is, the moment you uh, file an application before the Honorable Adjudicating Authority and Authority reserve for orders, and you take another two, three weeks to get the order in end up you we end up paying some fine to IBI. All those things poor IP uh, probably do not get back the money. All those things we should take it up. There should be some via media to get out of this problem. So thank you so much. Uh, I'll not because uh, Pooja, when Madam is here, it is absolutely a nonsense or it doesn't make any sense for me to dwell into the area, though I really, really want uh, uh, you know uh, to dive deep into the uh, CIP process as an IP. Now I'm into the litigation space. So be it as it may. Thank you so much, friends. Uh, I understand. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether uh, Virat Kohli will hit 100. But
our participant for your you know wonderful uh, you know quick thinking and i also recognize my co uh, you know members in the kipf management committee uh, executive committee and the members of course aipa uh, maximum sir this should be a habit we should we should continue this habit of uh, collaboration we'll get you the best speakers and with uh, all of us we, when we have our uh, you know intentions very clear only good things can happen to us um, with that i'll 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 just wind up my thoughts and shawn can you take it forward to the next level thank you so much shawn uh, thank you very much thank you sir now let me call upon uh, shri gs narasimha prasad sir managing director ipa icma for the presentation how to you sir thank you thank you thank you mr christopher good afternoon to you all it's very nice to be uh, with you all today uh, though we we started discussing just two days ago about this event that we could uh, join in together be a part of this is a really nice thing thanks to you mr panikar and mr uh, uh, christopher uh, pooja ji welcome and nice to see you it was only last week that you know uh, we had a round table in delhi where uh, pooja ji explained in uh, detail along with two other speakers on this uh, discussion paper and the major features of it and the uh, you know uh, a, a kind of a the major change in the way these compliances can be seen as we saw we had a 3 hour uh, program the day it, it stretched beyond 3 hours and then we had smiling faces at the end of it all most of the time ips are complaining complaints is the biggest pain let me not stretch that pain pain by itself so there were a lot of smiling faces that day and i i would i'm i'm almost sure that you know that will be the kind of a thing today also i'm very happy to ipa icmai is very happy to be joining mr panikar and mr christopher in this venture and then we look forward to uh, partnering you with with uh, with uh, uh, kipf i i believe kipf is a very active uh, body so we look forward to that uh, manoj anand ji nice to see you good afternoon uh, uh, i i also uh, see ibc loss i don't know if there is anybody here i i don't know anyone personally i happy to be uh, joining with you and the management committee and other committee members of kpf and i see a lot of known names in the among the participants today i am sure it will be a very very active uh, discussion forum and you couldn't have chosen a better presenter than pooja ji uh, if if uh, if any of you don't know she is a gold medalist in commerce from srcc she was correct me pooja ji she was the second lady ip to be registered with ibbi or third 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 third, 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 third. okay 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 and she is as uh, mr anand was mentioning earlier before you know the formal session started she is a trail blazer among the ips she has already made a mark and i'm i'm, I'm without, without meaning to be solicitous i may say ipi icmi is proud of you pooja ji and i am sure you will continue the good work thank you so and, much for your kind words thank you so very very much sir thank you sir i'm very very much obliged thank you over to you mr christopher i'm sure we'll have a good session today uh, thank you very much sir what's up sir now let me invite uh, shri gyan chandra mishra sir chairman of ibc committee of ica for the presentation ഉമാർ <laughs> uh you know mr gyans was invited by me uh, with the purpose that uh, 
uh, let me be very specific and to the point so that I should not eat up uh, Pooja's time for which everybody is very eager to listen. Uh, first thing is that as uh, you know, representing a huge IP community, I, I just give you two or three reminders. 23rd is the last day for filing of your uh, IBBI form. Jo aap, uh, uh, registration for IT and uh, IRP, RP and liquidator ke liye karte hai, toh, uh, whosoever is eligible. Subject to holding uh, AFA till 31st of December 2024, he will be eligible. So just a reminder for that. Second food for thought to Mr. Sankar that uh, CRP regulation on 19th of June have already come. Uh, uh, Mr. Ashish Mukija has already called me up. He said, Manojji would like to have a session with you on that thing there. So definitely we shall uh, have a, uh, may have a joint session with you also in the days to come. And uh, I think for uh, this particular, what happened, what, what our experience has been in the past that IP brothers do listen a lot, but when the question of giving suggestions to the IBBI comes out to be there, they a little bit become lazy and doesn't do it. I think 30th is the last day. For that, uh, what procedure we generally drop to be most effective is that, uh, you know, what suggestions we are having as uh, from our IPA side. We discussed that in our uh, governing body. And after a discussion, we prepared a paper and already given to uh, Pooja Ji so that she can incorporate those suggestions as per her wisdom uh, in her deliberations. And I, I would request Pooja Ji that at the end of this webinar, you prepare uh, the suggestions which you might, must have, uh, you know, added and culminated with all the webinars which you have uh, hold on till today, uh, till date. Uh, with we, uh, uh, you know, managing committee people, and th those suggestions we shall, uh, at least from IPA side, I assure you, I, I shall share those suggestions uh, uh, on behalf of our association to all our IP members, and uh, with the request that they should submit it online to the IBBI, definitely before 30th, I think 30th is the last day. Uh, another request I would like to make to the IBC law is that, uh, you know, we people are uh, not so rich. Uh, uh, not many rich IPs are coming on this platform. You have your 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 your, your case laws. Uh, the you know the, is something very very good. You give some special concession to we uh, uh, organizers who are inviting you regularly on our platform, like IPA members of IPA, like members of KIPF. Uh, you know uh, for your subscription. Uh, so let if uh, somebody from the IBC law is there, let them come out with a reasonably good offer, which we shall circulate among our members and later on uh, do for that. Uh, another thing, uh, you know, as Mr. Sankar was saying, you know, uh, we people are working a lot in uh, northern India, Delhi, Chandigarh. But I got some uh, two assignments for Bangalore also. I was really upset with the working of the history of the Bangalore uh, yeah, yeah, NCLT. Uh, maybe, I don't, you know, you, you, you people be working a lot in Bangalore registry. What your experience is, uh, you know, it requires a lot of improvement because since we are handling assignments on all over India basis, but I found in Bangalore registry, uh, a lot of glitches are there, which need to be, uh, you know, plugged into. Uh, as far as uh, these forms are concerned, you know, for which uh, are my sister, Pooja will be taking care of everything. We have mainly suggested uh, that uh, you know we uh, we file our uh, urine form also in our CA institute. Uh, generally, what happens is that most of the work is done by our office uh, team only. Uh, we, here we have the digital signatures for uploading of the form at the end of the uh, uploading number one, or we go with the Aadhaar number. And many a times both these sites doesn't work properly, and it takes a lot of pain uh, in you know uh, putting your energy uh, for this unproductive work. But that uh, our suggestion is to the IBI is that. The way we have for UDIN that uh, OTP do come out uh, to at two places, one at our uh, you know telephone number, another at uh, uh, our email, and uh, when our team members can have access to uh, at least to our email account, so then they can easily and readily able to do it. Along with that, we have also given four or five suggestions which uh, Pooja ji will take care of. And I won't repeat it therein. Uh, with this note, uh, I conclude myself. Thank you very much to Mr. Sankar. Thank you very much to Mr. Sean. Thank you very much to Mr. Natsimao and uh, officials of IBC Law. Thanks a lot. Welcome, Pujaji. Please start your deliberation. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Manos Kumar Ansa. Normally, 4 o'clock is the time when you have the tea. Right? We make a small break. And we just try to slot on ourselves. And by the talk of uh, Anand, sir, he tried to enlighten us and show that next two hours, you are in a very hot seat and ensure you learn very much. By this, I would like to introduce the speaker for the day, IP Pooja Bhagdimana. She has more than 22 years of unblemished 
specialized experience and strategic advantage in trust as in management resolution and restructuring of non performing performing assets and also has a very good experience in management of running units or management of corporate debt as a going concern sale auction of assets and other allied activities he is one, one of the panel is on the panel of one of the most, most of the banks and financial institutions as an insolvency professional for ibc she is regularly acts regularly acts as a faculty on behalf of ibbi various ipas government authorities mca taxation authorities and so on in fact various landmark ju landmark jurisprudence have been formed in case being handled by her under ibc especially with reference to contributions received under preferential transactions regarding fraudulent transactions regarding applicability of capital capital gain tax during liquidation by this i wish no time to introduce you and welcoming madam thank you so very much sir thank you everyone for the very kind words and uh, i look forward to um, a session uh, in fact this is very very closely held uh, you know this is something which is very close to my heart because we have been trying as an insolvency professional to ensure that we are reducing the compliances and the complications actually which have been faced by insolvency professionals and ibbi has taken an extremely positive step in this regard so i have uh, drafted a presentation as where i'll make you go through what was the aim uh, of uh, you know this discussion paper i was lucky enough to be a part of the study group and as as a part of a member of the study group we had given a lot of uh, suggestions to ibbi that how can the compliances be reduced and i'm very happy to inform you that uh, you know uh, most of the suggestions which we had given to ibbi have been taken in cognizance of so you know we did try to um, explain the pains uh, as an insolvency professional two two major pains which we are actually facing one is with reference to compliances and second is with the reference to the pressure of the deadlines and uh, something very important which we tried to tell ibbi was that yes there have been uh, you know issues with reference to uh, dual reporting because we've been doing a lot of reporting to ibbi and similarly uh, similarly to our ipas also so every month uh, by the you know we are giving monthly reports to ip to our ipas also uh, Uh, you know uh, filling various forms with ibbi and genuine constraints which an insolvency professional face is something which we tried to highlight uh, in our, in the study report which was submitted we did um, you know mention the fact that uh, compliances were becoming so cumbersome and so complicated and in fact also uh, more than time consuming we uh, we ended up paying a lot of fees uh, you know there were cases where the maybe the irp did not complete the compliances when the rp wanted to complete the same um, you know we had to pay the fees when whenever we wanted to modify a form or update the details we needed to pay the fees so all the issues you know where in we suggested to ibbi that there should be auto fillers in the forms there should be an option to uh, upgrade the information which we've submitted modify the information which we've submitted uh, we also uh, explained uh, we also explained regarding the date of the order sometimes we uh, you know the order of in a particular matter is updated in a very detail uh, you know in after a certain period of time and the receipt of an order was uh, you know was delaying the compliances due to which there were issues which the ip faced so all those issues in detail we we submitted to ibbi and i'm very happy to say that ibbi has actually uh, you know uh, has taken cognizance of that and uh, let's go uh, you know um, in detail on on the discussion paper so primarily this discussion paper has uh, the aim is to reduce the cumbersome compliances which as an solvency professional which we have to uh, you know do on a very very regular basis and this discussion paper um, was um, you know um, was taken out on the 10th of june of, of this year 2024 and by this uh, discussion paper by the reduction of the compliances ibbi has proposed to streamline and reduce the number of the cirp forms which are filed by an ip primarily by merging some forms by dropping some forms all together and by revamping certain number of forms so currently right now there are nine uh, cirp forms to which we have to fill to ibbi and the problem was that they are linked to different events that some have been linked to the cirp commencement date some to the public announcement some to the appointment of the rp etc etc some to the issue of the im and then we had as an ip needed to remember each and every date when we had to fill that particular form so the 
uh, key changes which have been proposed. First is a genuine reduction in the duplication and the simplifying of reporting. So a reporting which we were doing to our IPA and also doing to IBBI. So now there is just one form which will need to be filled, which will which we will have to go and fill on the IBBI portal, and the IPA will automatically get that information. Secondly, uh, there would be um, you know that uh, it has is is proposing to centralize the reporting on the IBBI website and revamp of the entire forms and the contents of the same. So uh, when you see uh, the May basic aim of the proposed changes are firstly to signify and reduce the compliance burden on the insolvency professionals, number one. Then also that it is will also ensure that IBBI receives the relevant data and the timely information for effective monitoring of the CIRP. Yes, uh, the monitoring will continue to be done, but only um, you know with the data, and there will not be any duplication of the information which we are actually uh, going to be providing. So, a lot of compliance requirements are proposed to be consolidated. And uh, they, you know, if you remember, uh, you know, whenever you appointed a professional, whenever there was a cost disclosure, relationship disclosure, we had to separately go and fill in the IPA. Um, portal. Now everything is proposed to be having a centralized IBBI platform and it will primarily be a single window interface for all insolvency professionals so that they can fulfill their reporting uh, requirements. So now under this new system, now the existing method which is there of the filing forms uh, will be streamlined. Firstly, uh, there were two forms which was there was one form IP1 which was at a pre-assignment stage and there was another uh, form CIRP6. So every time there was maybe an avoidance transaction, an extension, exclusion. So within a particular time period, you had to fill the CIRP 6 form. Now both those forms will be eliminated and that will definitely reduce the paperwork uh, you know, for of our professionals. And also now a monthly reporting system will have, is introduced. Yes, we are doing monthly reporting, but we are doing it with IBBI and IPA both. So now this monthly reporting will only require the RPs to submit a status update by the 10th of every month. So now it is not, um, it's not that, you know, you've, you've made a public announcement, so in three days you need to fill a form, or now you have issued the IM within three days or within seven days you have to fill a form. No. So now all those will be by the 10th of every month. So if you are completing in compliance in a particular month, then by the 10th of the next month is when you're going to have to just update a form, which we'll go into in detail. Uh, what are the forms? What are the changes? What are the amendments? We will do that in detail. So now the idea basically behind these proposals changes. Firstly, like I said, is of course to avoid duplication. And of course, also secondly, to move to a monthly compliance framework. So now by the whatever you have done in a particular month will be, uh, you will have to be filed with IBBI by the 10th of the subsequent month. So yes, um, we did try to highlight to IBBI that yes, CIRP itself is a very, very tiresome process and there are some stringent timelines and compliances had become so cumbersome that I do know that a lot of insolvency professionals were actually leaving the profession because of the uh, innumerable compliances which had to be done. And unfortunately, a lot of penalties and fines for not submitting the forms in a timely manner was, uh, was also being was a problem. So yes, uh, reducing these compliances is of course a very, very welcome move by IBBI and something which our work will definitely reduce to a large extent. Now, IBBI has highlighted that firstly, the amount of information would be reduced. The amount of data which we actually have to provide will be reduced. And there will be a special emphasis on removing duplication and the monthly reporting. Also, the deadlines to give a particular information. Uh, so when you've adjusted the compliance deadlines, it will reduce the pressure and the frequent overlapping of the information and of the dates. Like as, uh, as an IP, uh, right, if you know for particular, you haven't been able to complete a uh, you know, particular step in a month, there was a CIRP 7 which needed to be filed within 30 days. So if you are handling a number of cases, so the dates which you needed to remember for submitting the CIRP 7 was different. So I myself have put in a lot of reminders that, you know, my for this particular matter, the CIRP 7 is to be filled within this time period, else there will be, you know, penalties and fines, et cetera, et cetera. So now the entire compliance process has been simplified by combining, uh, you know, various uh, reporting 
on the IP, I, IPA and the IBBA website into a single centralized IBBA website, eliminating duplication and making it easier for the stakeholders to access and to use. So, um, uh, so now uh, the dates, uh, initially the dates were, of course, like I said, were on different dates for an IP handling the CIRP assignments. Now there is a monthly compliance by the 10th of every month. So as you can see on your screen is what were the actual forms which we needed to, uh, you know, file. So there's an IP1 which needed to be filled, you know, within three days of you giving a consent. Then CIRP1 again within seven days from, uh, you know, their public announcement. CIRP2 from the seven days of, you uh, you know, where the, till the replacement of the IRP. Then your CIRP3 was till the IM within seven days. Then again, CIRP4 by within seven days of the RFRP. Similarly, the CIRP5, 6, 7, 8. So these were the existing reporting requirements which needed to be given to IBBI. Uh, also, besides to IBBI, uh, there was a separate reporting also which was being done. So any time uh, an order you needed to be passed, you had to uh, provide that to IBBI and it was recurring. And immediately you had to provide that information to IBBI. Uh, then again, uh, uh, you had to upload, go to your uh, portal on IBBI. And um, then the, when once your public announcement is made, your invitation of EOI is made, your claims are done, your SCC meetings, your POFE data, your CIRP six and eight. So all this was the separate existing requirements of reporting which needed to be done earlier to IBBI. Besides this, to your IP, as you can see on your screen, so, uh, you know, your public announcement had to be informed, your relationship disclosures had to be, be uh, you know, they were recurring within three days of actually, uh, you know, if, if you uh, constituted the COC within three days of raising interim finance and supplying the IM on appointment of the IRPRP, then again, uh, you know, your uh, fee disclosures, cost disclosures, monthly reporting, uh, you know, uh, so all this is the existing reporting which you're giving to IPA. So now what you can see on your screen are the proposed changes which have been, uh, you know, thought of by IBBI in the form. Now your IP1, which is now, uh, which initially had to be, every time you gave a consent, you had to fill that IP1. So now that is proposed to be dropped. Your CIRP1 and your CIRP2 have been proposed to merge into one form called the CP1. Your CIRP 3 and 4 have been proposed to be merged to one form again, which is CP 2. Your CIRP 5 is divided into two forms. So that is basically, uh, you know, capturing firstly the details of the application which you file either for the approval of the plan or your liquidation or closure. And CIRP 3B is when actually the orders come for that approval of that resolution plan or the liquidation or closure. So this CIRP 5 is now divided into two parts. The CIRP 6 is now proposed to be dropped. Uh, the CIRP 7 uh, is also not, not required to be filed now. Now there is a monthly one form of CP5, which is a very simple form with very minimum fields, which have to be submitted by the end of every month. And they will also provide the status if there is any delay. Everything is included in that form itself. And the CIRP 8, there was a form which you had to fill when you are, this is for the avoidance, when you're forming an opinion, when you do the determination, when you're filing the application. So now that is revamped into one form called the CP4. So we do each and every one of these forms, uh, you know, uh, bit by bit, uh, one of them. So first one, which you can see on your screen, this IP1, which had to be given within three days when you gave a consent. Now, this is no more there. As you can see, this is proposed to be dropped. Again, what you can see on your screen is the CIRP6 is also proposed to be dropped. That will not have to be filed anymore. So you won't have to file the form when you are file, you know, filing the CIRP6 for either for the avoidance or the extension or the premature closure, your commencement or, or your request for liquidation before completion of CIRP. So all these forms will not need it to be filed right now. So they, they will all come in one uh, CP5 form, which we'll be doing um, henceforth. Uh, what you can see on your screen uh, were the two earlier forms which we needed to fill. That was a CIRP1 and a CIRP2. So the CIRP1 was till you made your public announcement. Your CIRP2 was till you actually, um, till your uh, RP was replaced. 
Now, instead of both these forms, there would be only one form, which is the CP1. So that has to be filed after your report of your COC constitution is filed in the NCLT. So the CP1 will need to be filed only once, once the report of the COC constitution is filed. Uh, there were the last time when I, uh, you know, I did this session, in the end, uh, you know, there were some uh, queries which were raised in the discussion groups, which we'd had earlier. So that is something which I'll take up in the end. First, I'll just like to just take up what actually, what does the discussion paper say? Then I'll take up that what were uh, the opinion which we got in my last uh, round, which we had had at the IP, uh, IP of ICAI. So what were the feedback which was received? And then we'll do the feedback which has come uh, from IPA also. And then thereafter, if there is anything additional you want to add, we will do the needful. But right now, firstly, I'm trying to concentrate on what has been written in the paper and then what all changes can additionally be made, we'll discuss in the end. So this CP1 is to be filed after your report of your COC constitution is filed. Similarly, as you can see on your screen right now, uh, there were two uh, two forms, uh, two very detailed forms, CIRP three and four, which will not have to be filed. Now, now they are uh, they are being combined into one form, that is the CP two form. Now, this will have to be filed after you have issued your RFRP. So earlier, when you had when you when you would have issued your IM, you had to fill your CIRP three, and if you'd uh, after your RFRP, you had to fill CIRP four. Now both of them have been combined into one form called the CP two form. This has to be filed after you have issued the RFRP. So we will do all of them in detail what they say, but this is just a synopsis of what were the existing forms and what you have to file right now. Again, uh, there was this very detailed form of the CIRP file, which we had to file earlier. So that was still you completed the CIRP from the issue of the RFRP till the completion of the CIRP. Now there are two forms. This CIRP file has been broken into two forms. One is the CP3A and CP3B. Now, primarily, they are called A and B because they are referring to the same, um, you know, this the same stage. Because CIR, the CP3A is when you have filed, after you file an application for either a, res a resolution plan approval or for if you file an application for liquidation or if you file an application for closure, then you fill your C CP3A. And when the orders of the same are passed, so when the orders are passed for the resolution plan or for liquidation or foreclosure, then it is like a continuation of your CP3A. And then you just have to basically fill in the details that these are the orders which have actually been passed in the application which I had filed for the plan approval or the liquidation or the closure. So your CP3A and 3B are primarily at the same stage, but uh, CP3B is when you actually the orders are passed by the adjudicating authority for this particular application. What again you can see on your screen is there was a form in fact every month which you needed to file which was a C, uh, CIRP7. So if you hadn't made a public announcement or if you the RP hadn't been appointed or your IM had not been issued uh, within 90 two days or your RFRP had not been issued by a specific time period or your CIRP was not completed. So every month you were supposed you was uh, you had to file the um, uh, CIRP seven. So what you can see on your screen, so that is something which doesn't need to be uh, filed right now. Now that has now that CP5 is very simplified form. It is with very minimum fields which have to be updated every month. So that's something when I come to it. So once you have filled the details initially, so there will be a lot of um, auto fillers, there will be auto fillers, and you will have the option to edit the information which you have already filled in. So I think by the end of the month, like we used to be maybe making hundreds of pages of MIS or to our MIS to our IP or IBBI, that will not have to be done. So all we need to do is basically load the information which the already you know which we already have done in that month if you had a uh, meeting in that month all you need to is upload the minutes you know so that's something we'll come to later so primarily the CIRP 7 form does not have to be filled anymore and it's revamped into the CP5 again 
uh, on your, your screen, you can see when we had to file an application for avoidance. So when we made an opinion where we did a determination, uh, we had to fill a CIRP 8 separately. And when we actually filed the application, we had to fill a CIRP 6. So now that CIRP 8 form doesn't need to be filed. Now it has been revamped into one form, which is CP4, which is only to capture the details of the avoidance which you've actually filed. So you do not really have to mention that when you made your opinion, when you did the determination. So now this, when you actually file the application for avoidance with the NCLT, that is when you will have to fill the CP4 form. And, uh, and there's a final one, there is one form which is CP5, which is a monthly reporting, which we'll go ahead. So basically the proposal which has been made, which, you know, uh, uh, in, in this, that currently the timelines uh, the problem was that the various forms were linked to different events and now which le led to due dates for filing forms on very, very different dates. So which was making it very cumbersome for the IPs. So that's why a monthly compliance reporting framework has been thought about, wherein the IP will report the status and the progress of the CIRP as on the last date, what was there by the 10th date of the following month, except only there's one form which you have to fill when the orders are passed, which is CP3B. So because that's when the orders are passed within seven days of the same. So, but one thing we need to remember, the timelines which are given in the code and regulations have not changed. So what work we have to do as an IP, we will have to do within the timelines. So the timelines for carrying out the various activities will remain un uh, unchanged. Only the reporting that when you have actually done that particular activity, that is something which will be streamlined. And the aim is basically to minimize duplicate submissions, to auto-populate fields. That is very important. So from the existing data, which you've already filled in, so that is not something which as an IP, we will have to fill again and again. So all that will be auto-populated to the extent which is possible. And only the information relevant to the stage of the CIRP at that point of time will have to be filled in by the IP. And the entire compliance process is hope we are hoping to streamline the entire uh, process and it will of course reduce the time and effort required for compliances by the IPs and um, also your cost and relationship disclosure. So as you know that you know um, different portals were managed by, by IPAs and now everything is going to move to a singular platform provided at the IBBI website and there will be a strategic consolidation which will simplify the compliance process and also enhance the ac accessibility and oversight and a smoother regulatory compliances will be there. So now let's actually come to the discussion paper that what are the forms which we need to fill. So on your screen, you can see is the first form, which is the CP1. Now, uh, the due date of this form is again, like I said, you all you need to remember is by the 10th of the month, succeeding the month in which you have uh, constituted your COC. So once you have the you have filed your report certifying the constitution of the COC, the tenth of the next month is when you have to fill this form. So basic details are there. So where when you have filed your report, now all this information what you can see on your screen is about the corporate debtor, its name, and uh, address. So most of the things that you can see on your screen would be auto populated and editable. Now, this is a very, very important aspect that sometimes information used to come, uh, auto information, but we did not have the option to change that information, even if it was incorrect. But now we are going to have the option to change it. So it is that is two very important things in the CP forms, which will be there. That yes, to the extent information is available, they will be auto-populated. And also if we need to, in, if you want to change any information, they will also be editable. So the first thing is just basic details, whether it's a going concern, whether any proceedings are, you know, um, are there in the SIC industrial unit. So uh, one thing is there that yes, this option is, I think point number 12, in point number 13, which is whether about winding up and um, a SICA is something, that's information which we as an IP may not have. So we should have the option of writing, you know, that we don't have available. So this is something which in the last uh, discussion, last um, round table we had. So this uh, question came up. In the CP form, primarily you are filling just the details of the name, the address, the sector, who are the promoters, whether it's a going concern or not. Then your details, which will anyways be mostly auto-populated. Thirdly, is the 
most important that when was it actually admitted and date of admission and another important aspect is date of receipt of the order by the IRP. So that is a very important aspect. Earlier, we never had the option to inform IBBI that we did not get the order uh, of the initiation uh, by a particular date. So now uh, I think yeah, NCLT has also uh, made a system of um, sending emails to the IPs, to the relevant people uh, that when an order is actually uploaded. So once it's uploaded, so that is something which you can mention that what is the date of receipt of the order. So the basic details need to be filled in that what was the date of the order, what is the amount of underlying default and whether the default is outstanding. So this is the basic form, uh, you know, about who is the IP, what is the date of the order admitting the um, the particular application, then you just put in your details of the public announcement. So which paper you made the publication, uh, what was the date of the publication? And if you if there's any delay, why is the delay? Then the last date of submission of claims, again, it is an auto-populated editable field. Then if the, for the class of creditors, then the name of the authorized ARs for each class and who are the IPs who have been identified to be selected as an AR in a class. Then this is the information about the public announcement. Next information is very simple about the process status, whether it is a listed corporate debtor, yes or no, whether IRP is taken into custody or records and assets, yes or no, if no, if you made the application of uh, 19 to, if no, specify the reasons, that's it. So it's nothing in detail which needs to be filled. And then there are just attachments which you want to submit. So if any documents, if you want with a brief description against each document, if you want to provide to IBBI, you can just upload that document along with maybe a one-liner uh, document description what you have uploaded. And this is it. So the instead of the CIRP1 and CIRP2, this is one CP1 form which you need to fill, which you can see on your screen. Most of the data is very basic data about who is the corporate debtor, who is the IP, when the when did the application actually get it got admitted? Then is when did you make the public announcement? And of course, in AR cases, who is the AR who's been selected? What is the uh, you know whether you've taken into custody the records and assets, whether it's listed. And that's it. And whatever documents you need to attach, you can just attach with a brief description. And there is no compulsion that these are the five things you need to attach or the 10 things you need to attach. So this is depending on you as an insolvency professional, what information you want to provide to IP, IBBI, what information you want to provide to IPA. Because I think as an IP, it is very important for us also to ensure uh, that we provide the correct data to them. So, and that is something I think we also feel safer that we, there are certain, uh, you know, decisions as an IP, RP, liquidator, which we are taking. And when we are informing IBB and IPA regarding those decisions, it's something which we have informed. So this is a very open-ended attachment documents, which you can just provide. So this is it. So instead of the CP, CIRP 1 and 2, this is the first form which you have to file. Second form is the CP 2. Now, this is to be, this is in place of the CIRP 3 and 4. This is to be filed when your RFRP is issued. So if your RFRP is issued in a particular month, then by the 10th of the next month, you will have to fi uh, file this CP2 form. This is will start from the date of the issue of the um, RFRP. Again, the details first is who's the corporate data. That is something most of it will anyways be auto-populated. So your information is your SIN, name of the corporate data, PAN is something which is already there. Then you are going to be informing um, in this form that who, how you were appointed as the registered values. So in place of you also filling in um, uh, the disclosure, that these are the values I've appointed. Uh, there's an IPA disclosure you had to give. Now, this is something the information will be over here only. In this, an IPA will automatically extract the information which you have given in this in these CP forms, and the IPA will automatically get that information. So the appointment of registered values is something which is supposed to, um, the details are supposed to inform. Then is about the IM. Now, the re not the details of the IM doesn't need not be submitted. You just have to say what date you submitted the IM to the COC. If there was a delay, then why? Then if do you have the audited balance sheet, what is the last audited balance sheet you have? 
whether CD is an MSME, uh, whether the IM contains all the details as per the requirements. If not, then you mention these are the details which have not been provided. So this is the only information which you have with reference to the IM, which you actually need to provide. Then next is the information with reference to the PRAs, that who were the provisional um, what date did you issue the provisional list? What date did you issue the final list of the PRAs? And who are the PRAs? And that is just their name, whether they were eligible, yes and no. So that is about it all. So primarily, all the information which you are giving is that who were the, when did you issue the provisional list? When did you issue the final list? And who were the list of the PRAs? Further, then you have the RFRP. Again, you are not giving any details about the RFRP. All you're doing is giving what was the last date of submission of the resolution plans and whether the RFRP requires any non-refundable deposit or not. Then you come to the attachments. Now, in the attachments, you, all you do is you make, you attach the IM, you attach the RFRP and any other documents if you want to attach with a brief description. So it is a open information, which is, you know, um, open platform actually, which has been given to us, that we are giving just the basic details about what was the IM. We are giving basic details, who were the values appointed, uh, and uh, you know uh, when did you uh, actually submit the IM to the COC. Then you details give the details of who were the PRAs. Then you give the details of when did you actually issue the RFRP. That's already there in the form. And what is the last date of submission of plans? And that's it. And then you make the attachments where you attach the IM and you attach the RFRP. So instead of a very, very detailed CIRP3 and a very detailed CIRP4, so we have this form, which is a CP2. So this is it. So this is the CP2 form, which needs to be filed. So till you've actually received, till you get the actual plans. So this is the CP2, uh, uh, which, needs, which, needed, which needs to be filed now. Then we come to the CP3A. Now, instead of uh, the CIRP5 form, now this is, like I said, been divided into two. One is the CP3A, that is regarding when you have actually filed the application for approval of the plan or the liquidation. So by the 10th of the month, succeeding the month in which you file the application. So if you have filed an application, let's say on the 7th of this month, so the form which you have to fill is by the 10th of the next month. So it is not a lot of information that uh, immediately, you know, I mean, I've uh, filed the application within three days, I have to file the form or within seven days, I have to file a form. So we are getting a lot of time to actually fill this form and there are not many details which need to be filled right now. So which is, you know, a very, very good thing. Then from the date of, uh, now the CP3A is again from the date of the submission of the application and you've actually submitted it for the plan approval, for the liquidation or for the closure process. So there are different sections in this. So section one, two, three, four, five. So if you file an application for resolution, then there is a particular section. If you file an application for liquidation, there's another section. If you file another application for closure, then that's another section. So the only the relevant section will open. So the section one is the basic. Again, like I said, the name PANSIN, which is anyways will be auto-populated and editable. In this uh, first section, all you are giving is basically a synopsis of details of the claim that what were the principal amount the other amount and what is your total admitted claims so primarily the details of the admitted claims are something which needs to be included and then it is a drop down from the drop down you see whether you are actually filing an application for approval of a plan where you're filing an application for initiation of liquidation or you're filing an application for closure. So it's a drop-down list. So the respective section will open. So if you choose, um, you know, resolution plan file, so your section two will open. If you, you choose liquidation file, your section three will open. If you choose your closures, then um, the fourth, uh, um, uh, will uh, the first, uh, the fourth section will open. So basically you are just giving the initial what are the details of the claims admitted? Then from a drop down, you see what form needs to be filled. So if this is the section two, if you've actually filed an application for approval of the plan, basic details is all you are providing that for the final resolution applicant, that 
uh, how many compliant plans were received and considered by the COC. So basically, uh, whether it was an individual, what was their name, whether it was approved, yes or no, whether promoter related party, yes or no. That's about it all. So for your final resolution applicant, that's exactly, that's the only thing which you're actually mentioning and the date of the COC when you actually approve the plan. So this is the sum total of the information you're giving about the resolution plan. Then you're giving who are the members of the COC and what was their voting share and whether they assented, dissented or abstained. So these are the basic details you fill in. Then you need to fill the details about the resolution plan. That is something that who were, what was the amount claimed, what was admitted and what is the amount realizable. So that is about your CIRP cost, what your secured creditors are getting, how much unsecured operational government. So this is a basic synopsis which you anyways would have when you have filed the application for approval of the plan. So that is the information that you have to give here. Then you have to uh, inform whether any interests of any existing shareholders, how many shares they had earlier, how many they'll have later. When did you fill the form H? Plan is contingent, yes or no. Whether any monitoring committee has been recommended, yes or no. Whether the RP is part of the monitoring committee, yes or no. If details, yes, then what is would be your fees fixed by the COC or the AA? If no, then who will be the nodal individual from SRA who will be in, in you implementing the plan? And if there is any other details of infusion of, of uh, equity, bank guarantee, all these details, other details, yes. So all these details, you can see a uh, detail has been asked. So most of the information is something which you can fill in maybe five or 10 minutes when you've actually filed the application for approval of the plan. So this is that, this is it. This is the only section two if you have to file, if you have actually filed an application for a resolution plan approval. Then you come to the liquidation. Now in liquidation, if you have filed a form, uh, if you've ap applied for liquidation, then details in just the information is why did you file the application to liquidation? I mean, there could be reasons about no valuable assets, no plan was received. You can elaborate the reason. What was the meeting of the COC which passed the resolution for liquidation? And who, how much voted uh, for, uh, how much COC members voted for the same? Then simple, simple yes or no whether COC has approved the plan for contribution under section or regulation 39B, yes or no. If yes, then what are the costs? Then again, if COC is recommended sale as a going concern under regulation 39C, again, it's a yes or no. And whether they have recommended as a going concern or the business of the corporate debt as a going concern. Again, has COC fixed uh, the fees payable to the liquidator? That's regulation 39d again it's a yes and no answer that's it so this is the only detail of the information that you actually have to file in the application for the liquidation again similar small information if you file an application for closure that what was the terms of the withdrawal whether that application has been filed before or after constitution of coc who all distributed who the voting share who actually approved the same what is the then is the, this is it. This is the complete form, which is for closure. So as you can see on your screen, so the CP3A is, it seems very long when you see in the discussion paper, but it is divided into separate sections and all sections are not applicable. So wherein your basic, after your basic details, if you file an application of approval, there are um, some limited information which needs to be filed. If you file an application for liquidation, again, very limited information which you need to file. And if you file an application for closure, this is the limited information which you need to file. And then there is some common information, which is for all the sections, which is about what is the average liquidation value? What is the average fair value? And whether about avoidance transactions. Have you formed an opinion if there is any delay? If you've done the determination, what is the value determined of the avoidance transactions? And a common information is about how many employees were there at the beginning of the CIRP period and how many on the date of filing of the form. If you raise any interim finance, and this is it. So this is your CP3A, which you have to file and make the relevant attachments. Your attachments is the cop copy of your application which you file for approval of the plan or for liquidation or for closure. You will cop attach the copy of the minutes 
where these resolutions have been passed. You will attach um, the, your compliance certificate and if any other documents, if you need to attach like a progress report, etc. So you can attach in the CP3A. So this is where the entire CP3A, which has been, uh, you know, which needs to be filled when you file the application. And after you've got the orders, after the approval of the resolution plan or the liquidation orders or the closure has been done, then you fill this simple CP3B form, which is just date. It's primarily giving what is the date of the approval, which has been given by the NCLT. Uh, what are the details of uh, whether, uh, whether it was a resolution plan, liquidation or process closure? Two things which you need to add extra is whether the plan which is approved by the COC was the same one which is approved by the NCLT. And if it is no, then what are the changes which have to be made? And in liquidation, whether, um, uh, you know, what was the details of the liquidation? Why was it filed? And you will just submit this information. So this is primarily, this is the only form which is with reference to within seven days of the order. So the CP3P is the only form which has to be filed within seven days of actually the approval of the plan or the liquidation or the process closure order which has been passed. Though it is not a very detailed form because all the details you've already given in CP3A. So when the order comes, you just basically have to give this is the date of the approval of that of the resolution plan or the liquidation. So again, this is... Um, has reduced the burden to a very, very large extent. So, and all you do is you copy what is you will attach the copy of the plan order. You will copy of the order approving the plan or the liquidation. And this is it. So these are the only, uh, this is the only information which you really need to give in the CP3B form. Besides this, um, there is a CP4 form. So this primarily is um, including the CIRP8 and the CIRP6. Now, earlier we had to fill a CIRP8 when we actually made the opinion or determined or whether at that particular point of time, um, you know, there was an order passed. So there was a CIRP8 form which needed to be filed. Now, there is just a CP4. So you do not need to fill a separate um CIRP6, not a separate uh, CIRP8. The only the only form which you need to fill is the CP4 form, which is your form at the time of avoidance. And that is when you have actually filed the application for avoidance for your PUFIA transaction. So this is, again, like I said, this is by the 10th of the month, succeeding the month in which you file the application. So we have enough time to actually fill this particular form. In this form, most of the details are auto-populated, editable, whether it comes to the details of the IP or the details of the corporate data. But now there is one, This these are the detailed information which has to be filled, um, which is about uh, who were the parties to the transaction, what is their relationship, the nature of the preferential. So um, the fact of the matter is, um, in the last discussion roundtable which I had, so it was said that, you know, the, we will be making a presentation, the IPA will be also be making a presentation that maybe this much information regarding avoidance is not required to be given and only if the total amounts, if it is a possibility, is something which can be provided further to IBBI, that would be even more beneficial. So uh, the basic uh, details in this form is firstly, uh, primarily, that when did you file the application? If was there a delay and what is the transaction value reported? And also the additional fields will you only update once the orders are passed. So when the orders are passed, the same things you will file that for what, for how much is the order passed? Who were the parties? Uh, what was the date of the transaction? Whether this amount has been, uh, what has been the decision of the NCLT, whether it has been accepted or rejected or others, please specify. So this in this CP form is on all these forms, please remember are editable, modifiable. So if we fill the form in a month, it is not that if we have some additional information, we can fill it in the next month. So that is what I get to know uh, by reading this discussion paper. So when the avoidance is actually adjudicated, so those additional fields will have to be um, the details that whether did the NCLT accept the prayer or he, they rejected it or others, please specify. And in this form, you just have to make the attachments about, you'll be uh, attaching a copy of the audit report, the application which you file, the order which has been passed and any other uh, document which you may feel you want to fill.
these were the four forms which have now come instead of the CARP 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So now comes to your monthly reporting. Now, this is an important form. It is not all that detailed as it seems to be, but this is something, this is the only form which on a monthly basis you have to update. So let's come to what this is. This is again 10th of the month in of what you've done in the month from the 10th of the next month is something which you're going to have to uh, uh, submit to IBBI. So first section is very, very, and most of it is a drop down, whether it is a yes or a no. So whether there is a stay of the CIRP by any court, it's yes or no. And if it is a yes, then which is the name of the court and what is the order of the date? And you can attach the copy of the order. This is the first thing. Then you come to the second session, uh, section. The second section is the current CIRP stage. So this is primarily. So the details of the activities which have already been completed in your previous reports, please remember this is important. That will be auto-populated and we will also have the ability to edit if we have given any incorrect information. So any new activities only which you complete in a particular month is something you're going to have to provide to uh, IBBI. So which have you have maybe given in your previous month, which you've already provided, they will anyways be auto-populated. And only new activity which you have done in that month is something which you will have to uh, update or upload. So, and all these are radio buttons that whether you've done your public announcement, your report of COC's file, your IM submitted, your expression of interest, you was invited, RFRP issued, plan submitted, plan approved, uh, application for liquidation process submitted. So all these are radio buttons. All you need to do is click that what is the stage of the CIRP where you are currently. So this is your current CIRP stage. And this is it. So this is a section two. Then you come to the section three. In the stage, what you are, so you just have to basically, if you issued a public announcement, what was the date? So this is auto-populated also, if you've already given that information earlier, and it is editable. So what is the date if you certify the constitution of COC? What is the date where your IM you've submitted to your COC? Your EOI, what was the date? How many EOIs you received? Your RFRP, when did you issue? How many plans were submitted? So most of these details are auto-populated and they are editable. And these are in brief, as you can see. So what was the um, so what what was the date of approval of the COC when your plan was uh, actually approved? Uh, attach the minutes. Uh, what has been a total CIRP cost till the COC approval? Then when you submit a resolution plan to NCLT, the filing number, the next hearing. So see, all you're doing is usually like what we were doing is if you're writing detailed mails to IBBI, that this is what happened in the last state. And, you know, I mean, I think my MSS went into hundreds of pages. So by the end of it, now all you need to do is say, what is the next hearing date? So in a month, if there's one hearing which has happened or two hearings which have happened, you just have to uh, inform IBBI in this, which is the next hearing date. And if there is any delay, you can just mention that. Then again, if you file an application for liquidation, attach the minutes wherein the um, liquidation was approved, what was the NCLT filing number, and what was the total CIRP cost. So all these are very basic details which you need to, in, even in a state specific, these are not a lot of information which you are providing, but this is important information. All this is the most important information which you need to provide to IBBI, which will come in a very concise uh, manner. Again, there's a section four in this, wherein, if you have conducted any meeting in a month, all you need to write is the date of the meeting, what was your meeting number, and attach a copy of the minutes and the voting result. So you do not have to basically write in your MIS that what all happened in the minutes. You just have to attach them. When was the date? So, you know, things have become very simplified with these forms. Again, in your next section, where what are the details which are filed? So you can add the rows and what is the outcome of each. So and it they will remain editable in subsequent months. So if there any change has happened in subsequent months, that is something which you will be able to edit. Once you fill the CIR CP5 form, you will be able to download it. So you know what information you have provided to IBBI. 
and in the next month you would have the option to edit the information already given and last is your section 6 wherein the disclosures which you had to make to ipbi uh, ipas now if you will make sim um, it to ibbi wherein if there is any cost disclosure or any relationship disclosure which has to be made so this is the sum total of your CP5 form, which is something which you have to do a monthly reporting. If there is any reason for deviation, you can mention the reasons. So this, please remember what is the most important line which has been mentioned in this, that any details of the previous stage, which have already been completed, this information will be automatically populated based on the details which have been submitted by the IP in the previous months. But however, the IP will have the ability to edit and update this historical information in case any corrections are needed so as to maintain a record of the entire CIRP in the current form. So primarily, the CP5 form which is there uh, is something is this something which is on a monthly basis. It may seem long, but actually most of the information is either a drop down or in radio buttons or either in a yes or no or providing the details. Maximum what you're doing is be uh, providing the minutes of the meeting because now, uh, you know, you are supposed to have meetings every month. If you've had it, please upload the minutes, the date and the meeting number. Upload what has happened in, in a in, in short, in brief, what is the issue of an IEA? So that is something which you can inform and your cost disclosure and your relationship disclosure. So this is something which is, uh, you know, I think I, I, I come to the end of my presentation. So it is like a synopsis of what we have, uh, you know, uh, done regarding the particular forms. The changes are um, a lot, actually. The kind of work we had to do in completing the compliances was um, was a lot. And now, like you said, as you can see on your screen, uh, the you know so many forms. This IP one we don't have to fill anymore. The CIRP six we don't have to fill anymore. The CIRP one and two is gone. CP one, which is not a very complicated form, again CP three and four have been reduced to one. CP two, which is again not a very complicated form. CIP3 is yes, 3 and 3B is because about the applic. It is important to uh, in give the information about the plan, which has already been uh, submitted before the NCLT. Uh, so these, the proposed changes will have a lot of effect on reducing the compliance burden um, on the insolvency professionals. Um, before we actually, before I end, now I'd like to take up uh, just a second, I will uh, stop share and share the uh, paper, which the suggestions which uh, IPA had said that they want to give to um, IBBI. So basically the suggestions which IPA has um, said they want to give that basically uh, it's linked to Aadhaar and DSC. So maybe sending an OTP or registered email and phone number is something also which they wanted uh, should be added. Also um, that the CP1, the heading should be properly done. So CP1 should be the details of the public announcement, CP2 details of IM and RFRP, CP3 details of uh, approval of the plan should be there. CP3 is, uh, actually it is the same. Three and 3B is one is when you file the application, other is when you get the order of that application file. So that is there. Um, IPA suggested that CP5 may be named CIRP information. Uh, CP4 may be uh, named as details of PUFI and avoidance. Um, also, um, that let there be one form and rest be made part of it on an applicable basis on event. Um, I think uh, Sir has said that let CP3 and 3B be named as CP3 and 4. Uh, since 10th is the last date, IBBI must be technically competent to accept 95% of the forms on the 10th. Otherwise, it will crash or slow down. Uh, present uh, modifications should be allowed. Yes, or modifications are anyways without penalty. So this is something which is editable, which IBB has written in their uh, discussion paper itself. Uh, subsequent fields will also be auto-populated. Uh, these are, uh, I think, uh, auto-population is already there, which has been uh, mentioned in the paper. Uh, also, it will be integrated with NCLT and MCA. That is something that is the next step 
I believe which IBBI is in the process of doing, of integrating this entire system with the MCA, with the NCLT. And uh, I think there is a, a platform which IBBI is in the process of making. So actually all this, I believe, is a part of that endeavor because wherein these forms also a lot of information which we will provide will go into their database and they will be able to um, actually uh, get a lot of information on their fingertips, the IP and IBBI both, and uh, they will it, will it will help them in integrating it with the NCLT and the MCA data. Um, also, this is filing uh, may twice, maybe reduced to only once. Um, Party-wise details, I agree, uh, should not be required to be filed because it's something which we are anyways doing. So there's something, uh, you know, it can be reduced. And uh, CP5, sir, had said that minutes may be dropped. But sir, minutes, if we just information, all we have, because we've already drafted the minutes, so all we need to do is just upload them. So I think it is very, I think, uh, I also feel as an insolvency professional, we have to ensure that, I think uh, for us also, it's very important to ensure that we are giving the correct information uh, to IBBI every time. So, uh, I mean, I feel happier when I provided the minutes to IBBI and IPA. So at least the information which we have actually, um, what work we have done in that month would automatically go to IBBI. So this is what had been suggestions which had been made by uh, Sir, by IPA. Um, anything anyone else would like, uh, would anyone like me to repeat anything in the presentation? Or if there is anything you want me to go back to, um, I'm more than happy to do the same. Uh, I Udaji, uh, one thing, uh, you know, the, the missed it while talking, that, uh, there should be one remark column also. Because many a times uh, you, know, you need to say something uh, which is not inbuilt in the form. Uh, uh, that right. is that is also our one of the suggestion. Yes. So that is, I think, uh, the reason somewhere we have mentioned that it 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 will be there in many uh, cases. It is um, it is there in a lot of forms, uh, wherein you can give if there is any delay. The reasons. In fact, there's one more option of not applicable. There are many cases wherein we can write. And but you see, there is uh, if yes, please add remarks, which is there in uh, most yeah. of the uh, in, in the forms, uh, which is there. So that is something also which we can add. And also if, uh, I think another, uh, uh, we have an option of adding any other details, I think, which is given in all the forms. Wherein in, in the attachments also, we can mention if we want to give any information, any document we want to provide with the remarks. So that is also given in the end. So that is something we feel we want to add. And without just saying a details that, you know, this needs to be filled or this needs to be uploaded, anything else which we feel uh, we want to provide is something which, uh, you know, which is there in the end. I think that like a progress report also. So this is, the, I think, left it open to us. Is if people, uh, some IPs want to give a lot of information for them, this, uh, you know, a lot of information we'll be able to upload in the end. But for those, uh, you know, uh, where they just want to give a yes or a no or a button remark, that is also, uh, which is possible now. There was a point of time we had so much information to provide. It had become very much cumbersome for all insolvency professionals, actually. Uh, anything else, sir? Uh, anyone else wants to make um, any comment? Any other thing? I want to ask one thing. In yes, 3B form, yes, is there a date of receipt of order is there? Because yes, sometimes it is not uploaded. Yes, that is something that is uh, very important. So this is another thing. So uh, four or five things which I discussed in the last discussion paper, where uh, there were some uh, comments which had been given. So the comments, I'll just like to recap what the comments had been given by the in the last uh, round table, which I had I had had. So the first thing, first comment, which they said, what over here it is mentioned, which in CP3B is within seven days of the getting of the order. But actually, it should also be in from the from the date of receipt of the order. That is very very important. So yes. one thing, yes, one thing again. Like I said, uh, I'll just come to it from CP one onwards. From CP one onwards, uh, they said that uh, this is within when you um, when you file the application of your report certifying the COC. But there are cases when the COC is reconstituted again and again. So 
will we be able to update the information that is something which is also important so that is something we uh, uh, you know we can give um, uh, you know feedback to ibbi that uh, if you have filing the report again and you're reconstituting the coc then the further dates we should have the option of adding the rows when was the next date when you uh, reconstituted the coc so that is something which was uh, you know uh, uh, feedback which we had received last time then again another feedback which i had received was for this section three uh for the application for liquidation here it was mentioned uh the voting for resolution plan heard it actually should be voting for liquidation instead of who assented who dissented who abstained because this is fine when you are saying voting for resolution plan in the application for approval of a plan but in the uh, in the section for liquidation, if you are filing a liquidation application, this should actually be voting for res liquidation. Who all assented, who dissented, who abstained. So that is one thing which, which came out from the discussion paper, uh, which uh, last week. And in the CP3, there was this another issue, which, which like us, which same ma'am, the CP3B, that which is within seven days of uh, the order being uploaded on the website of NCLT. So instead of because many times an order is passed, but it is actually uploaded. I mean, there was a recent case which I got, which the orders were of March and I got to know in April because that is when I got a mail from NCLT. And I mean, that was when you're appointed from the panel, you don't even know which case you're going to be appointed in. So it, for uh, compliance purposes from an RT, IP liquidator point of view, the date, relevant date would be the order you get to know whether the NCLT is uploaded on the web, NCLT website or you have got it. So these were the two or three, uh, you know, um, feedbacks which I had received. And of course, that feedback which we had received was removing this preferential, um, the details of the PUFE transaction, just that totals should also be mentioned. And there was no need for these details uh, which had been given related party-wise. So these are the only uh, feedback which we had uh, received. Another feedback which I had received um, when we were discussing the CP5 form was wherein you have the details of our, all IAs filed with NCLT. So the, at this stage, it was mentioned that they said only important IAs should be mentioned because there are many sometimes cases where you do not have all the details of what all IAs are mentioned. But I think as an RP, you would have the details of the IAs, at least the IA number and the filing number. And of course, uh, we should have the option if you don't have an information. So we should be have the option to skip. It's not that the form would not be filled if there is no, uh, you know, sometimes uh, we do not have the entire uh, details. So we should have the option of not applicable or maybe skip those post portions which we do not have the information. So this is there. Anything else um, you would like to, uh, anyone would want to discuss I in the form? Madam, I, Madam I, I am Amir Hamsa. I want to uh, yes. discuss regarding, you know, what about settlement of account before constitution of COC? What? So that, that comes in closure. So when okay. that happens, so for, uh, as you can see, your CP3, so there are three, three A. So there is one was, like I said, uh, when this is your closure, right? So when an application is after, is closure file, so whether the application that you're talking about 12A. So 12A, yes. So there, this is, this is the section, which is there, section four in the form CP3A. So this is it. The, what were the terms of the withdrawal? Whether it is filed before constitution of COC? If no, then, uh, you know, and then what was the date of the COC approval and who are the members and the distribution of voting share? So, but then if you say a yes, so you do not need to fill the form six and seven subsequently. So primarily this is, uh, this is the section four CP3A if an application for closure is filed. Madam, I have a question on uh, cost yes. disclosures in CP5. Yes, yes sir. Whether this cost is approved CIRP cost or actual cost incurred by the RP? This is CIRP cost. So, so they, what they cost? are saying is they see cumulative figures to be updated by IP yes. every month. Uh, see, I, I, I'll tell you why. I think where this is coming from. Because earlier, um, we never used to have monthly COCs. Now what has happened now, we, uh, as per the regulations, we're supposed to have a COC every month or maybe, uh, you know, if it has been once in a quarter. 
But now, uh, every COC, you are supposed to give a details of the CIRP costs and place it before the COC for their approval every month. That was not something which was there earlier, which has happened in a, just a few months back. So now, because if you're anyways placing it before the COC, uh, what is the cost cumulative figures to be updated by IP? I think this will be maybe a little problematic every month because it is a possibility that, uh, uh, you know, every month if you're having a meeting once in a quarter and till that it is approved, that CIRP cost, how will you include it over there? So this is a section which is given, which, which needs to be... Uh, I, I mean, I think you all can give your feedback to IBBI about this cost disclosures to be made every month. Or I should clear it, uh, whether it is actual cost incurred by the RP. Uh, maybe it will be approved next month or so. Yes, yes, that is there. So that is something. Um, uh, and if every, I, I, uh, the, I would advise every IP, I think uh, I have tried to give a synopsis of the forms. What are the changes which have been made? Uh, what needs to be filled now, what does not need to be filled now. So my advice would be to actually, um, you know, uh, do give your feedback to IBBI. That is very important. We come to forums, we discuss the issues, but we do not give the feedback to IBBI. So that is important. I, I believe the last date is 1st of July to provide the feedback. Uh, I think you need to go on the IBBI's uh, portal go to public comments and select this particular discussion paper. And if any comments you have, please do give. It will be, I think that will be for the benefit of everybody. I think that is there, so it will be benefit of everybody. So any other questions, anything you would want me to repeat or anything, please. That's what, uh, thank you, ma'am. In fact, I was just, I endorse the view of Amir, sir, which you know, certain wording would be, uh, yes. you know, if added could clear you know, some sort of ambiguity. For example, yes, um, we cannot, CIRP process is never a templated one. You know, every yes. So basically there'll be a lot of fighting between the financial right. credit days of approvals and other things. So therefore, yes. uh, we will closely work on uh, that particular thing. We'll add, uh, we'll also keep you posted, madam. So yes. that Please, so please. Yes, because that is important, sir. Uh, because it is important for us to give our feedback. That is important. And, uh, you know, because if we do not give the correct feedback, so there are four or five things which have been brought to my knowledge. I mean, when I was having the discussion last time uh, with the IPAs, um, and it uh, these were very uh, important, uh, you know, uh, feedback which we received. But yes, I think cost disclosure was something because we right now have to give it once when the actual process is over. Now I'm doing it on a monthly basis. Of course, every month now we have to place before the COC, what are the costs which are incurred, what is approved, what is not approved. But um, it may become a little cumbersome. That is one point which is there, uh, you know, uh, with reference to the this particular reporting, which is there. And uh, another factor is when it comes to real estate projects, uh, similarly aggrieved people will be there in numbers in hundreds yes yes if you if, you know, for example same uh, same cause of action same relief 100 yes. Okay. yes yeah um, that could be a challenge there should be some via media out of this some sort of i don't know how to, i don't know how to put it across another thing is uh, when it comes to uh, you know we have almost 15 uh, 14 uh, NCLTs, uh, sorry to say, no standard post in certain judgments. For example, um, uh, you know, delayed delayed acceptance above 90 days. You know, the poor IP will believe that, okay, this is closed. The claim is closed. Suddenly something pops up. Yeah. So things, uh, I don't know how this is. But the good thing about the CIP this thing is uh, it's editable and auto populated. So yes, it's those... editable. Most most of the fields are editable, auto populated, and it is uh, it is actually going to be reducing a lot of compliances. There are no two ways about it, because we had nine forms which we were giving to IBBI. We had separate monthly. Every month we were giving to IPA, uh, you know, uh, details of the information, and sometimes that, that those details went into hundreds of pages. It is a fact. So yes, these changes are uh, very much uh, positive. 
yeah uh, so that is uh, we can try our best to you know give our feedback also so that the final form when it actually shapes up is something which is for the benefit of all the insolvency professionals and yes they actually feel happy so but then then again like every form which we are filling at the 10th of every, next month we have a lot of time it's not that you know i filled made my rfrp today and within four days or five days or seven days i have to make my disclosures i have to fill the forms no it is in the 10th of the next month which is there we have enough time and That's not yes yeah a positive thing because otherwise in between you miss out things if it is yes. even plus seven days, even plus five days, that's that's a yes, yes, yes. And when sure. it, I was just wondering, madam, in this case, um, when it comes to the ultimate user, uh, according to me, subject to uh, uh, you know correction, ultimate user of this database could be the IBBA coming out with some logical conclusions or something like that. So when it comes to editable things. You know, don't you think that it is giving a room, a window for IP to, uh, all the IPs to, uh, you know, to, 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 to rectify their mistakes earlier than? Yes, yes, there is a route to actually rectify the mistakes. And the fact is, uh, but what information you have submitted to IBBI is something which is you have to, you're signing by the end of every month, you're signing on that form and you are downloading it. So it's not that you don't know what you have given uh, information earlier and it, you always have the option to modify it. Uh, of course, uh, the lesser mistakes we make is much better for us, uh, lesser disciplinary actions we'll have. So it is very important to give the right information. But right now, very less information needs to be given. The discussion paper seems very long, but in actuality, there is not um, much information which is there. Most of the things are you're uploading. You're uploading your RFRP, you're uploading your IM, you're uploading the minutes, you are, you know, uploading any relevant information or documents you want to provide. You are, um, you know, uploading the details of the application, but you are not writing all those details. I mean, if you know what I mean, that otherwise you every month, there were, you know, I mean, at least I spent at least four to five days making my MIS to submit to my IPA and then remembering when my which form was due in IBBI. So we've all developed a systems of reminders. So hopefully, you know, that is something which will stop now. It's a very yeah. positive step from my end. I feel it's a very positive step. And I genuinely feel that most of the uh, suggestions which were given have been taken uh, into cognizance by BBI. So it's a very, very uh, positive step. Rest, of course, is let's see how it uh, actually pans out. That's important. Early in earlier regime, the best way to see whether you have missed out a form is to just file it. And at the end of AFA, when you seek AFA, IBB or IPA will come out saying that you have not done this form, that form, this form. So you would open the book and read and do you know, all those things. There's one way of, you know, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. One one, one suggestion is, uh, Pujari, can you close on your, this uh, yes, PPT yes, now? Yes, yes, yes. I'm so stopping. We, 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 we yes, can talk yes. face to face with each other. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, you know, can, can, can you know, I requested earlier also, uh, Mr. Santan, with your permission, can you, uh, yeah, since you have been... Uh, doing it a lot and now we expect you to be from our side more and less from the IBBS side. Definitely. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> in, in, Definitely. In, you know, yeah, yeah. In, in that context, yeah, what what changes you would like to be proposed and, uh, you know, put in the, uh, uh, the that particular discussion form? Can you share yes. that proposed change with, uh, you know, we management? so that we can share it yes. with v, uh, VIPs? We will definitely, sir, I will do that. And I yeah. de genuinely feel, of course, with the... See, most of the changes, uh, one was with reference to the uh, monthly uh, reporting of the um, cost disclosures. Like I said, whether it is a CIRP cost, your monthly cost is something which may become a little cumbersome by the end of every month to provide uh, also. Uh, we can have some reduction in the avoidance uh, details in the form which we fill because the application is something which we'd already be, be giving. Besides this, um, uh, I think the forms have been truthfully very well made. Besides, yes, but we should have the option if we are reconstituting a COC, uh, then we should have the option of editing further and adding the rows which is there. If Again, if we are uh, issuing an RFRP again, so 
again, we should have the option of informing, uh, you know, um, because right now that is not there. So every time when we were editing a form, if I had filled a CIRP5 and I again wanted to edit it, I had to pay fees. Assuming it, the, uh, uh, the, it used to assume that, you know, I have not filled my first uh, CIRP5 only. So whenever I wanted to edit, what used to happen was by the end of it, if there was a new RFRP which had been issued, so we were not having the option of without payment of the fees to actually, um, you know, fill the details. Now that is something which will be available. So um, just a clarity needed from IBBI that every time, you know, if we are fill, uh, get uh, issuing a new RFRP or sometimes there are cases where you're doing the EY process all over again. So would we have the option to amend or maybe add a row if a new EOI has been added, a new Form G has been issued, a um, new RFRP has been added? So all these things are something, uh, you know, that some clarity is needed with reference to the same. Rest truthfully, I feel that these forms have been made very well. You know, uh, what we, we suggested of giving heading to the each form, uh, what's your opinion for that? Uh, and uh, another thing is that... Uh, this uh, uploading creates a lot of problem with the digital signature and uh, uh, many times with uh, Aadhaar number also. Uh, what, what what you feel should some sort of uh, 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 the OTP not given to the uh, IP's the mobile OTP, number? OTP is, a, OTP is a very good idea, sir. That is something which can be done with OTP is okay. But with also uh, with reference to, I think, uh, you've written CP3 and 3B to be named separately. Actually, they are the same. I mean, yeah, yeah, signing yeah, an yeah, application for yes, approval, yes. that's when you get the order, that's the 3B. That is the only uh, separate thing. That is, a, it's, we don't really need to do that. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I think a separate naming can be done. A separate naming can definitely be done and wherein which names which are uh, easier. Easier, easier for and, uh, yes, you know, yes. representing that particular form because that in that case, right. remembering CP1, yes. 2, 3, 4, uh, because yes. it's a little bit... Uh, uh, difficult and you know in any case uh, you know the, uh, right. the uh, uh, we thankful that you are accepting our most of the suggestions and, and deleting one or two only that's uh, <laughs> not at all sir i will also be making my uh, I'll, I'll make a synopsis of the suggestions and of, of course uh, provide it to ipa also and so that we can uh, you know all be on the same page i think the only uh all of us or we want that the uh, problems of IP should be reduced. This is the only intent uh, that, you know, we were actually facing a lot of issues uh, with reference to compliances and the deadlines. So these these were the two main challenges for an insolvency professional. Hopefully we should be have we will be able to ad address at least one of them, right? So because of this. Great, great. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much, sir. So anyone has uh, once anything else to be discussed or anything in details do you have your own views i think this is important i think we all are insolvency professionals i was here just to uh, maybe give a synopsis of what the forms are so if, if anyone has any other idea i think we all can i think ipa is here so they will be able to you know uh, yeah, this is the right forum wherein we can actually uh, you know voice the problems and inform uh, ibbi further Anyone, sir, has any other questions or clarity uh, uh, any part of the presentation? I want to suggest one thing. Is yes, there sir. a possibility of getting the reminder from IBBI <laughs> for filing of this form on 10? Like we get on GST and income tax portal. That uh, whether you have filed or the due date is this, like likewise. It, yes. uh, it should have been available for CRP 7, actually. Yes, it, no, that was that was there because, you know, the CIRP 7, for all cases, the dates were due dates were different. So if, if I was handling four cases for the due date for the CIRP, each seven would have been different. In this particular case, at least now we all have one date, which is the 10th of the next month. So we know. So we all know by the 10th of every month, we have to fill the CP5. And all the, of course, the subsequent also, um, you know, forms which need to be filled. So I'm sure they can send in a, start sending a reminder from, we can we can advise them to do that. Definitely. Let, let KIAPF start doing for its members and we at IPA shall also start doing it. Because this is the age of artificial intelligence and these can be crop, on, uh, crop up very easily. There is, there is, N Kumar sir. N Kumar sir, I have question. Sir, uh, madam, apart from CRP forms, there should be time limit for approval of resolution plan, say three months or six months. So I will tell you one example. In one of my matter, 
I gave resolution plan on uh, May 2021. It was approved only on July uh, 1st, 2022. That was the day on which the judge retired. It also raised a lot of controversy and question. And in another matter now, the, it is a home buyer matter where I gave resolution plan during November 2023. Now only after so much was begging the order is received uh, uh, on 18th June and I don't know further how many months make it approved. So there should be yeah, so, so this is, I think, a problem which is a genuine, um, I think, problem with constraints with the NCLT benches because they were um, lesser number of benches earlier, which is there. And I think any case during the COVID times at that point of time, there was such a backlog that uh, I think a lot of uh, orders were postponed for at least two to three years. But now I think recently, uh, at least NCLT Delhi is now making an effort to take on a priority the, all the plan approval applications right now. And they are making an effort that all the plan approval applications get heard and get resolved. So yes, it, that was a very, very genuine constraint which was there about. No, but then this is... One you know, more point, madam. In the cost yes. list also, yes. the agenda with the resolution plan, it is coming under ordinary list. In the, in the very first hearing only, it is given under priority list or top 10 list. Uh, but in the rest of the case, it is coming in the order, ordinary list and it is not reaching also due to no, time it, constraint. It, it, it is an issue, sir. It is an issue that there are now so many uh, pending applications due to which uh, the main application of the resolution plan was getting delayed. I think that is really improving to a very large extent. I don't know in Delhi it is. I don't know about the other benches, sir. But this is, I think, the first step which IBB has taken for you know, our compliances which we have to make. I think there are so many external factors over which we do not have a control over, uh, wherein we can just make our suggestions, which I think all of us do at various forums. But the fact is, um, I think this is with reference to only the forms which are there. Otherwise, if you start talking about the genuine problems, I think, which we are facing as an insolvency professional, we can go on for, I think, uh, four to five hours at least when we only talk about so many uh, issues which are genuinely there. So here, uh, the, I think this is the first step, maybe in the right, right direction, at least a reduction of the compliances which we need to give to IBB and IPI. And I think it's a very, uh, maybe small part, but it's something which troubles us IPs a lot. The reason became because a lot of um, uh, disciplinary actions have been taken for late submission of forms of uh, incorrect details provided. So I think this will be just the first step wherein, uh, you know, we uh, so some of our issues may be addressed uh, from IBBI. Yeah, issues with uh, judiciary and IBB, IBBA can I don't think IBB other than yes, I had no jurisdiction for that. More than taking up with um, uh, Ministry of Corporate Affairs, IBBA has hardly much of a say in the NCLT. No, no, they don't have any say. But then I understand last day in the NCLT Kochi, learned member was saying that, uh, you no, know, no, we have to hear this. We are getting, we are supposed to report to the government. So therefore, there is a, you know, pressure and a push and pull from either side. But then evolution is happening. Any other queries regarding the forms, which is there, would want me to address? I think uh, when somebody gives an amazing presentation, it will be uh, very difficult for, there could be only two things, either intersect or tangent. In this case, everything intersected. So probably there will not be much of a doubt. Thank you so very much, sir. I think Sean. Thank you, sir. Sean, uh, uh, please, you can. Thank you, sir. Let me thank each and everyone who are present here on time to have a very vibrant session on uh, the discussion on recent papers, recent changes which IBB, IBB proposed to do. We all know that we are in a, uh, living in a world where the information is in overflow and the data redundancy is happening. We do several multiple reportings and we feel at certain point of time what actually we are doing. And it's a good time, good that IBB came with the uh, discussion points. Let me thank Pooja Madam first because Madam came here, came first, delivered us a very beautiful lecture in the sense that she made us very clear that what all we need to update and regarding the MIS because 
normally what happens is that we are being caught all over by the IBBA or put the regulator will be running after us when we are not complying with the same. So Madam reminded us that we should have proper MIS, do things properly. Because we know that for the IBC system to exist, there should be a coherent regulator. And regulator, of course, they have to comply with several requirements and change the things. Thank you, Madam, once again. Be with us and to enlighten our thoughts. For this uh, meeting... Sir, uh, sir for this uh, meeting, yeah, one thing I would like to share before we end our meeting, for, you know, conclude your session. Uh, yes. So for this me meeting to happen, it, it's uh, several minds, several people coming together. So as I already mentioned, we have people from different parts of the country. It's a pan-India meeting, I would like to say. And for this to happen, let me thank Manoj Kumar Anand, sir. It's a life partner of Kerala Insolvency Professional Forum. We would like to call him as the big brother. Whenever we conduct any program, he is the first person who will call up and tell, Sean, you, you go ahead. Shanga, you go ahead. Pretty Joy, you go ahead. Thank you, sir, for partnering with us and uh, for making this meeting more lively and making um, more vibrant. We know that the Insolvency Professional Agency is one of the pillars of the IBC ecosystem. Let me thank G.S. Narasimha Prasad, sir, the Managing Director of IPA, ICMA, for partnering with us with free hands and ensuring that please do the progress. That was the strong support which made, made this meeting to happen. Again, I would like to thank Gyan Chandra Mishra, sir. Gyan Chandra Mishra, sir, is present here right now? Because, uh, uh, actually, uh, what, what happened, uh, we have a talk with him. Most uh, of you are having some restriction of 100 people to be get enrolled there. Right. He was not able to do that. But what message he has uh, said to me, that I would like to, uh, you know, convey to our my IP brothers. That is also, that is why I said, Ki, give me two minutes before we close the meeting. Right. Well, uh, let me, I already told Manoj, sir. Narasim, sir, I thanked him. Also, the uh, IBC Online. IBC Online is a learning platform. They share the judgments. Also, they also partnered with us. I thank the team of IBC Online for the same. And before all, I should like to thank our own uh, chairman, uh, Shangar sir. He had a 100-day plan. And one of his 100-day plan is to have more online meetings. Why don't we partner with uh, insolvency professional agencies? Why we are not partnering with uh, this uh, professional in institutes? Because that is the important thing. That should be the first step any professional institution must take. So thank you, uh, Shangar sir, for taking this lead. I, uh, and also one apology from my part and our team part because what happened is that we initially planned for lesser number. In between, we changed the Zoom subscription, but what happened is that due to a technical difficulty, we cannot make it happen. Kindly excuse those who could not partner with the same and kindly excuse all those who faced any technical difficulty on account of this particular uh, technical aspect. Uh, sir, I will share my presentation with you all so you can share the presentation with anyone. So anyone who reads it, I think, I think we should be ha will have an idea of the forms. So what I will do is I will share the presentation with you. So with IPA and with everyone and with Mr. Anand. So you can share it with everybody. Those who were not here, I'm sure with the with the PPT they should be able to understand what are the uh, you know changes which have been made. I'll just share it within two minutes. So thoughtful, so thoughtful. Thank, man. thank, thank you, madam. And also also the better. recording I must be available, right? Recording. Yeah, recording, uh, will be, recording will be available by IBC Law. We'll, in IBC Law website, it will be available. It, it will be available in our website also. Uh, uh, I in, 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 in our YouTube channel also. Right. Yes. Uh, let me interrupt. Uh, I thank I request each and everyone. Those who are not registered, please do register. You mention your name and the registration number. Uh, thank Sean, you. And Manoj, thank sir, you. Yeah, Manoj sir wants to speak something. Manoj yes, sir. Over to Manoj sir. Over to Manoj sir. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, you know, giving me such an importance, uh, uh, you know, giving me time and everything. Is there. But, you know, thing I would like to say is that for which I invited Mr. Gyanji here, actually what is that? We are holding a seminar in Delhi. That is on 12th and 13th of July, uh, uh, you know, in Delhi. That is uh, that is called uh, related to insolvency professions only. Last time we hold this seminar at Singapore. And this time we are holding it in Delhi. That will be an international seminar. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a coincident that today, uh, if if we would like to, uh, you know, subscribe for that, the fees for that is ten thousand rupees for individual subscription. And if we we are giving some early bird discount, and today is the last day to subscribe for that. And if you subscribe today, then you will get a discount of two thousand five hundred for uh, CA members. And if you have a more than uh, five groups. 
then you will get another discount of 10 percent so uh, that this is i would like to you know convey to my members that if they want to attend that particular seminar we call it as a resolve resolve india and uh, uh, you know you can save a uh, uh, few uh, uh, bucks against that around 2500 or maybe 3250 uh, if you you know uh, uh, if you subscribe for that today uh, this is uh, i want to say let's make that particular event also a success because when we were having it last time in singapore it was a very great success and at that time cost was very high but this time in delhi it it, it won't cost you much it will cost you hardly 6750 rupees if you do it today or maximum 10000 rupees so this is the only message I have for the people, uh, my IP brothers, for their information. That's all. Let me call our chairman, Tanga Panika, sir, for the concluding remarks. Thank you, Sean. Um, thank you, all of you, uh, especially uh, Puja, ma'am. Um, you have made a very wonderful, lucid presentation. I am sure you'll be embarrassed when everyone is, uh, you know, uh, appreciating you. But then, but thank you so much for your kind words. Thank you, everyone, for your kind words. They really mean a lot to me. Thank you. PPT shows the efforts you've, which you've put into preparing. You know, when it comes to that, shows the exposure which you have in the relevant field. In fact, the shows how many cases you would have handled to have such sort of. You know, thank you so much. Manoji, uh, IPA and IBC loss. Thank you so much. We look forward to this as a, a regular exercise. Uh, soon we'll be having one with um, uh, Ashish Ji, Ashish Makija and uh, IPA. And I would want IPA to partner with us and of course IBC loss. Thank you so much. Altogether a great feeling. Uh, first is always, you know, first of this kind is always a, you know, matter of memory. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sean. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you all. We conclude for the time being. Those who want the presentation, please share and uh, your email ID in the post. We will uh, not do it immediately. The due course will mail the PPT. Uh, Sean, sir, Sean, sir, I am having all the email IDs, all the people who yes, registered. Yes. I'll be sharing. I have already have so, the presentation. Okay, okay. Yeah, then, then I'll I, be doing so that. Pranav, Pranav sir will take care of the same. So I, I I'll take, take care of that. Day. And for yes. CP, uh, you'll be, all will be getting the acknowledgement just post the seven. Yeah, uh, you'll thank, be getting your you, acknowledgement. Thank you, Vidhi Thank we'll you. share the recordings also. We'll share the recordings also. Thank you so much, friends. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone.